Pacific Walton Club. I am a member of a fly fishing club. Why not come along with me, the IWFFC? We're gonna fish. We're gonna laugh. We'll be real serious. Um, so, this guy, I have to admit, I kind of grabbed the idea off of Steve May. He had these cute little I guess they were, I don't think they were laser dub, I think they were, actually they might have been laser dub. It's a cute little minnow sitting on his desk at the, one of our forums at the Sportsman Show, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to grab some of those, or grab the idea and come up with some, with some different colors. You don't have to go with different colors, I'll just do two colors for this one. Uh, see if you can see under here, uh, where are we? That way. There's cute little guys like that. So start off with uh, this is a size eight must add three four double oh seven. Uh, it's a saltwater hook. It doesn't have to be saltwater, but I like these because of the weight. Um, it'll uh, it hangs in the the hangs upright tends to kill the fly a bit better. So we'll start off with some. Uh, white thread. I've got a good old trusty club thread that I've had to wax because this stuff is slippery as all get out. We'll start that off and then take slide in. But I'll start off with white laser dub. And this stuff's kind of nice because you can tie it in as a almost like a hair as opposed to a um, as wrapping it on the thread is dubbing. That's all it tends to have its own fiber length. So if you just take a clump out, comb it through your fingers three or four times, um, you'll wind up if I spread it out. Where's the camera? A rough clump of more or less the same length. And I'm keeping this fairly if you put too much material in these, these little minnows get kind of rotund and they like to roll over on themselves when you're trying to cast them and they put, they're trying to fish them rather, and you get lovely curly twists in your leader that you can never get out again. So I want my thread up just more or less behind the eye, turn my hook over, and I'll tie this clump in right in the middle. Make sure it's down good and good and snug. I'll we'll leave it all over the place. We'll do tan and olive. So we'll do a still laser dub. This is just regular olive. Uh, I'll tie in a clump a little bit uh, about the same thickness, or maybe a little bit sparser than that, but. Instead of tying it in the middle, once I get this combed out, I'll tie in just the tips. So we get a bit of a longer back. And feel free to stop me at any time and ask questions, or if I'm going too fast, let me know. So this guy, instead of tying it in in the middle, you can actually tie it in if it's going to behave, yeah, out the end. So I'll have longer material off the front than I do off the back. <coughs> so a couple of turns, all in the same place. You don't want to starting to wrap backwards or, or forwards, you want all the tie-in to be more or less right on top of itself. Um, and then this olive at the back, I'm just going to trim out of the way. And then, no, I should have done this in reverse. Ah, it's okay. Um, we've got some tan that I'll do for the, the sides. And again, Nice sparse little clump. 
comb it out so the ends are mostly matching. And then this one will tie in in the middle as well. And every one of these I do a pinching wrap to tie it down just to make sure that it sits in the right position. Okay, so now I've got big goofy looking mess of dubbing and I'm going to tie off and this is where it comes in handy to learn how to do this by hand, do a web finish by hand instead of using a web finish tool because you've got to get back behind all this material and not using web finish tool, I don't know if you actually can do that. So, oh, that's that much. Um, what I normally do with this guy now is I throw it on my lap just so it makes it easier and comb it out, but for the sake of being able to see, I'll pick it apart by hand here, or pick it together by hand. So all we do is comb all those materials back, sort of just the same as you do with a um, uh, with some of the fold back bucktail patterns, and then run a dubbing brush through it and get it to blend and fold back a bit. Takes a bit of playing around. Um, eyes, stick on eyes are great, but don't just stick them on because the first cast your little uh, minnow will lose his eyes and I don't know if the fish are going to care, but... It's okay to lose one because then he's swimming circles. You'd think, you'd hope. Maybe the fish like it with only one eye. Yeah. He's injured. What I'll do is I've got some thin dough slightly not quite so thinned out uh, goop that I'll uh, put a gob on either side and glue the eyes on with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm more or less going to put the glue ow, through, the, through the dubbing and right over where the uh, thread tie-in was. Stay in there, yep. Oh. Stuff is thick and making a mess. And then all I'll do is I'll pick the eyes off with a bodkin. Wanna lift that up just a bit, Sean? Oh. Those? Normally I'd use, uh, I guess it doesn't matter what color eyes you use, the red might add a bit of attracting color, some people would argue. If you use silver or red, it doesn't seem to matter. I've got them positioned and I'll just pull the hair back and then I'll just stick them down a bit more. If I, you don't really need to put head cement, you could, I guess, once you finish tying and uh, before you combed it off. But once you uh, once you've got uh, the goop in there and you've got the eyes stuck down, uh, the thread doesn't really unravel. Um, once you throw some goop in there or flex cement epoxy. Um, even the UV UV glue, um, they tend to stay. The only thing with the UV glue is if you just put a, a dab of UV glue on, stick the eyes on, and then hit it with the light, they're not. Chances are they're not going to stay. I've had flies that have that's popped off. So if you get a bit of glue around the edges of the eyes, it tends to hold it in a bit better. Or if you put a bit of a thicker 
the batch of UV glue on first and then stick the eyes in. Um, that glue sort of envelops the edges of the eyes and it's definitely going to hold it in then unless you hit a rock and chip the glue off. A uh, little blue and purple guy. Oh, in the camera here. Stuff like those guys. Um, make all sorts of crazy colors. You can tie a baby perch, uh, green, yellow, and orange. Uh, baby bass and olive and olive and white. This could be a baby bass or a little emerald shiner. Um, some guys have tied them. What was it? Tan on the back, green on the sides, and white on the belly for uh, like pilchards and stuff like that down in uh, salt water. Can you show the packages on the screen? Yes, absolutely. So. There's a price tag on there. <laughs> it's. Well, that's gonna. There we go. Senyo's laser dub. So it comes in a whole rainbow of colors. There's natural stuff, tans and whites. Uh, fluorescent hot orange. Purple. Green. Everything. Yellow, blue, pink. Um, you name it. So I mean any color combination you can think of you can do with these guys um, pink and white can be good for perch and crappy good for steelhead uh, if they're going after some smaller stuff I mean, these guys are a little bit on the small side but uh, could work um, could tie like a small brown trout small brook trout you name it I am a member of the flyfish club any old club, the Isaac Walton Club. I am a member of a fly fishing club. Why not come along with me, the IWFFC? We're gonna fish, we're gonna laugh. We'll be real serious till we fall and take a bath. We'll go to all of the productive spots. That is, if Elliot will point them out or not. I am a member of a fly fishing club, not just any old club, the Isaac Walton Club. I am a member of a fly fishing club, so why not come along with me to the IWFFC? You'll feel at home, you won't get lost, unless you're hiding from your wife or your boss. You'll be with nature, nothing wrong with this. And above all else, we'll catch lots of fish. I am a member of a fly fishing club. Not just any old club, the Isaac Walton Club. I am a member of a fly fishing club. So why don't you come along with me to the IWFFC? So tie your flies, maybe hide from your kids. Mayflies, stoneflies, coronamids. Grab your rod and your lucky hat Your waders and baskets and all of that Now you're a member of a fly fishing club Not just any old club, the Isaac Walton Club Now you're a member of a fly fishing club So why don't you come along with me to the IWFFC Now you're a member of a fly fishing club just any old club, the Isaac Walton Club. Now you're a member of a fly fishing club, so come along with me to the IWFFC.